Welcome to Danny Houlihan's Irish Experience Podcast. Join Danny on a journey through the historical island of Ireland, its people and the wild Atlantic Way, which is Ireland's last frontier. Experience the music and the culture that makes up the longest coastal driving route in the world. Now, please welcome your host, Danny Houlihan. Welcome to the Wild Atlantic Way and Danny Houlihan's Irish Experience Show. I hope you're all keeping well and safe, my friends. And we're podcasting one more time from the banks of the glorious Shannon River in North Kerry, Ireland. In this episode, part one from my sporting section, I will take a look back at an event, the Ballybun and Races, that were held in the area of the town in the year of 1888 and details from the local newspapers of the time, one of which was the Kerry Evening Post, and other local sources, which I have consulted. And it's ironic that this June, that the races will be held once more in Ballier Strand, home to the old Ballier faction fight. So I hope to get down there and sample some of its atmosphere, and I'll podcast that at another time. The above races were held in 1888 in accordance with public advertisement, were held about a quarter of a mile outside Valley Bunning at that time, as seen in the local newspapers, which are now faded brown, and sometimes, when I get them, practically non-readable, which is a pity. As this episode is going out, the Valley Bunning races are back in their original home this year in Valley A, Valley Bunning, on the 13th of June, 2023, at 1pm. Back to where it all started many, many moons ago where the old great faction fight of Valier took place on the Golden Strand of Valier in 1834. To celebrate this event once more, I look back through the faded papers and find many interesting events in the area surrounding the races that were held in that year of 1888 and the names of the people that were there on the day and the events that surrounded the annual race meeting. At the preliminary meeting, of the committee it was arranged that the races would be held on the Golden Strand of Ballier near the village but as the tide did not permit the races were held on the land of a Mr William Kay who very kindly laid a portion of his farm at the disposal of the committee. Now I have found William Kay in one of the local records of the time so he was a prominent farmer of the day in the area. Now back to the account of the day as seen in the newspapers of the time. Quote, the course was a very lively one, and the fences were rather stiff, for the class of cattle competed, as was evidenced by the fact that the last two races had to be run on the flat. Unquote. The weather throughout was very favourable, according to the reports of the time. Thus the people of the locality and the surrounding countryside that turned out in very large numbers. The Lartig Railway was used, according to the reports of the time, to transport the thousands of people from Listowel to the town of Ballybunion on the midday train. Several trains were used on that day. However, all was not well. There were, however, a number of complaints through the Lartig Railway for not putting on more up trains to the town due to the large amount of people wanting to join in on the race day activities in Ballybunion. Also, the cost of the fare was high. Many reflected that a reduced rate on the day would have added to the occasion. Unquote. On that day, Ballybunnan assumed a very animated appearance. The Maggie, Trick of the Loop, and Singing and the Drinking Fraternity did a very good business, notwithstanding the fact that they had a good deal to contend with, owing to the presence of Sergeant Patrick Galligan, the local constabulary force. Unquote. The arm of the law was present at the races, to keep law and order in the town of Ballybunion on that day and to prevent any antisocial behaviour. That would be drinking excessively and any other antisocial activities. The Royal Irish Constabulary Force was present. Now from the reports of the day, there was about 40 members of the Royal Irish Constabulary on the race course during the day under the watchful command of District Inspector John C. Hickey But it is said to the credit of the local people that nothing occurred to call for the intervention of the police, who consequently were able to enjoy the day's sport themselves. Indeed, 
a few whiskies were consumed by the officers. They had a few bets, a few drinks, to steady the proceedings. All were happy. The committee and stewards of the races, who were involved at that time. This is very important to all, as we have names of our people who were here at that time. This would be of benefit to their ancestors and relations who are still alive today. Quote, the following people constituted the committee and stewards, and indeed too much thanks could not be given to them for the energetic manner in which they worked in order to make the meeting the successful one it was. Dr. Jackson, Treasurer J.G. Rice, Judge and Starter Cornelius E. Sheehy, Castle Hotel Now I'll break just for a minute. An ancestor of Cornelius E. Sheehy's met me many years ago in Ballybunnen, a David Lawrence who visited, and we had a great chat about Ballybunnen at that time. Now back to the list. He was the Honorary Secretary and Clerk of the Course. Mr. P. O. Carroll, again the shop on Main Street, Ballybunnen. T. Harty, Railway Hotel, Ballybunnen. The bar, the railway bar, still there to this day. P. D. O'Mahony, again another local bar. D. O'Connor, Dr. Moriarty, William K., who allowed his land to be used. J. Boland, J. Welsh, P. L. G. C. Morvahill, W. Lavery. A. Gore, practical engineer, Lartig Railway, and a D. Scanlon. That constituted the committee at that time. And this is very important, and a record of their names that were part of promoting such an important event in the area of Ballybunnen at that time. Now to the races themselves. The first race was a steeplechase, the list old plate of five pounds for which three horses attended. And we have the names of the horses, and this is a historical fact. Miss Murphy's, Miss Moonlight, which was 10 stone, 9 pounds. Mr. Hartness, Miss Nana, the same weight. Miss Moonlight was forced to go to the front, followed by Miss Nana. However, Miss Moonlight, on being brought to it again, got over it very well. Mr. Pierce's cold, falling in hot pursuit. Miss Nana refused to leap the fence and practically gave up the running. As one local man said in a pub after, stated that that horse would be better off in the drinks tent. The remainder of the race was not badly contested, but Miss Moonlight proved to be too strong, a horse for her opponent, and won the race easily. From the faded newspapers of the time, we have another race. Again, the newspaper clipping was very, very faded, so there will be a few names missed out. Quote, The Ballybunham plate of three pounds, which brought the day's racing to a close, was then proceeded with. Three horses were entered for this race, viz. Mr. Bolster's mare, Gentle Annie and Miss Nana. The first carried nine stone seven pounds. The second, ten stone ten pounds. And the third, twelve stone. After a good race, Miss Bolster's mare came in first. Gentle Annie second and Miss Nana third. It was related on the day that the bookies took a massive hit, blaming a horse, the favourite Miss Nana, because the animal not being in her usual form and consequently not as she did some twenty years ago. Interesting. After the third race, all the people adjourned to the village of Ballybunion, where a good evening's business was transacted through the art of drinking at the principal alehouses. All the turfy people, the portion of them, stayed at the Castle Hotel. It has been said for another two days of drinking, which concluded the Ballybunion races. This account will be of great interest to our people, whose ancestors left for America, Australia, England, South Africa, and other continents. This is just but a small clip of our local history. It's very important. We should never forget these small events that happened long, long time ago, because these events, and their small events, made up the tapestry, which is our history and our culture, and indeed our people who are now since gone. I will be back again in further episodes to cover other equestrian events, this is just but a start. I hope you all have enjoyed this trip back into the pages of this local area once more. And an event that took place many, many moons ago here, names which are now forgotten. So we'll keep the history alive. All that I'm doing is trying to keep alive a part of our rich heritage and culture, which is sadly slowly going away with time and tide and a gallop of a horse. If you would like to support my research, which is ongoing, and podcast episodes, why not buy me a coffee? This will be used to update my research and equipment. 
I will give everyone who contribute a shout out in my series. Just click on the link below to support me in any way, big or small. Thank you. That's buymeacoffee.com forward slash YXQ Danny. So if you'd like to tune into my YouTube channel, you can follow me as the visual aspects of all my podcasts are up there. So stay tuned and contribute to the channel. But for now, Slorm. Bye. Thanks for listening to our show. Through its people, its heritage and its rugged coastline, this is truly Danny Houlihan's Irish experience. Bye for now.